The assumptions in the previous theorem are so important that they merit having their own definition. Uh, so if I have a domain A in Rn, a point C, an open domain, of course, um, more often than not we'll be dealing with open domains, a point C in A and a function f defined on A to Rm. Such a function is k times continuously differentiable at C uh, if and only if. So k times if and only if there exists an open set with C contained in this open set and this open set is contained in A such that the partial derivatives all partial derivatives of f exist in u and 2 all partial derivatives are continuous at C. So this is true. Now there's a lot of indices going on here, so what do I mean? L is going to be any index from 1 to k. So I'll write that in a moment for all L, 1 through k. And also, since m, well, let's just keep it as general as possible. Since m could be anything, I should also specify um, this definition for the component functions of f. Then this has to be true for all possible partial derivatives that we can take. So this is true for all i, p in 1 through n, since that's our domain, and for all l going from 1 through k. So what we can do is, um, this is what it means for a function to be continuously differentiable k times uh, on some open set, well specifically at a point c. And we say that a function is k times continuously differentiable on its entire domain a if this is true for every point c in that domain. And similarly, we can make a definition of what it means to be infinitely differentiable at C. So F, as above, is infinitely differentiable, infinitely continuously differentiable at C, if and only if F is k times differentiable, k times continuously differentiable at c for all k, for all natural numbers k. And when a function is k times continuously differentiable on its entire domain, we say that that function is of class ck. Similarly, if it's infinitely continuously differentiable, we say it's of class C infinity. Um, and the notation we would write is, for the case of C infinity, so if f is k times differentiable for all in some domain, we would say that f is, um, this is not part of the definition, this is notation. f is in C k on some domain so it has a codomain, which is Rm, and its domain is some open set A. So this is k times continuously differentiable. And we write C infinity Rm A 
if it's infinitely. I won't write that. So it's important to make the distinction between you know, a function that's continuously differentiable versus not. There are plenty of examples of functions that are differentiable but not continuously differentiable. So for example, uh, we all might recognize this function even in one dimension, uh, the function f of x that sends it to 0 if x equals 0, or x to the k plus first power, let's just normalize it, um, multiplied by sine of 1 over x uh, for other uh, points x. This function is k times differentiable, um, but it's not k times continuously differentiable, and the reason is because after applying the derivative k times, we end up with a function that's not continuous. And part of the reason we're making this subtle distinction is because I don't think a lot of references, textbooks, um, actually make the distinction. Most textbooks that I've seen often go directly to this definition without accounting for examples like this. Now it's true that we don't really often work with examples of differentiable functions that aren't continuously differentiable, but it's important to at least have the definition so that you're aware of what the two differences are. So what, now, what we'll do now is we'll make a definition for what it means for a function to be twice differentiable. That's the analogous version of what we had in the previous theorem. Um, and as you, can, as you can tell, a function is two times continuously differentiable if and only if it satisfies the conditions we had in the theorem that guaranteed uh, when the partials commute. So um, if a function is C2, then its partials commute. So what we want to do now is look at what about ordinary differentiable functions uh, and what does it mean when we can take their derivative again and again. And the reason we want to do this is because we want to know what sufficient conditions are necessary so that we can apply vector fields to functions over and over and over again. Well, depending on how many times we want to actually apply those vector fields. So with that, we can make sense of what it means for a function to be differentiable. And there are actually two variants of this definition. So a function f, let's say on an open domain as we've been having before, is twice differentiable at C and A if and only if, it satisfies the following conditions. First, because we're taking the derivative twice, we have to make sure that the first derivative exists in a neighborhood of u. So if and only if, there exists an open set, open neighborhood of c in a, such that the differential of f at x is defined, is well defined, it exists for all x in our open set. That's the first condition. And then the second condition, and by the way, this implies that the partial derivatives exist in this neighborhood, but it's a little bit stronger. Um, so we assume that this derivative exists for all x. And secondly, the partial derivatives of f, of each of the components of f, are also differentiable on u at, and now we specify specifically, we only demand that these functions are differentiable at c. Now remember, these functions are defined on the domain u, and they take values in Rm. Well, actually, these functions take values in R, but when we put them all together for all j, then they take values in Rm. And we demand that every single one of these is differentiable, which means we can find this differential operator, this linear approximation, of all of these functions at the point C. There's an equivalent definition 
Uh, that's slightly different, and it's important to know this slight difference. Equivalently, I can keep the first two conditions and replace the third one with a slightly different one that might seem a little bit weird at first. Equivalently, you can replace 2 by the condition that Vf is differentiable. for all differentiable vector fields. V from U into Rn. And remember, vector fields, the codomain is the same as the uh, domain that it's defined in, the vector space associated to that domain. So this is quite a different definition. And remember that curly V is the operator that takes in differentiable functions and spits out new functions associated to the vector field V. So we demand that acting on F, we, we obtain yet another differentiable function. But we make this assumption not just for the partial derivatives. We make this assumption for every single vector field. So it might seem like this condition is significantly stronger than this one. And the reason that this condition implies this is because I can take that vector field to exactly be the partial derivative vector field, the unit vector field, in the ith direction, let's say. So by setting that, this is a constant vector field and is therefore differentiable. And so this condition implies this one. However, it turns out that this condition also shows that for every differentiable vector field, we still obtain a differentiable function. And the reason for that is because every vector field can be expressed as a linear combination of these elementary vector fields by multiplying by some appropriate factor. This is exactly the same thing as saying that a basis can be used to express any element in a vector space. But remember what we're doing is we are expressing these different vectors at every single point. So we're not multiplying the vector field by a number, we're multiplying the vector field by a number at every single point, and a number at every single point is exactly the same thing as a function. And such a vector field is differentiable if and only if those functions are also differentiable. And so these two definitions, although they seem different and this one seems stronger, are in fact equivalent. And when we deal with functions defined on subsets of Rn that are not exactly flat, for instance, if we deal with functions on circles, spheres, tori, or anything like that, this definition is completely useless. It doesn't make sense to take the partial derivative of f in a direction if it's not even defined in a neighborhood of that point. However, if we talk about vector fields, it, we will make sense of what it means to be a vector field on such a subset, and we will also make sense of how to differentiate functions with respect to those vector fields when we talk about manifolds. So there's one more list of definitions we can make analogous to this one. Here we only made sense of what it means for a function to be twice differentiable. Maybe you can guess what it would mean to have a function that is many times differentiable. And we can make a definition using the first approach, and I'll actually leave that for you as an exercise. Instead, we'll generalize this approach. So if you notice, this definition can be used recursively. Once we have a differentiable function and a differentiable vector field, we can make sense of what it means to be twice differentiable. So for instance, I would say a function is thrice differentiable, three times differentiable at C, if and only if, Vf is twice differentiable for all differentiable vector fields, for all twice differentiable vector fields V on U. 
and again, I think I messed up a little bit, uh, the fact that I have a point C here, I should also have a point C. So I mean that VF is differentiable at C for all vector fields, V, from U to Rn. And then using this idea, we can make sense of what it means to be infinitely differentiable at a point and similarly at a neighborhood. And so now we have two different classes of differentiable functions. Continuously differentiable functions versus ordinary differentiable functions. And it's an important question, how are these related? And we already have an example of when k is finite, k times continuously differentiable does not, is not equivalent to k times differentiable. But you might wonder what happens as k goes to infinity. Is an infinitely continuous an infinitely continuously differentiable function a, the same thing as an infinitely differentiable function? And I'll leave that thought to you as an exercise. <laughs>